G'day, my name's Michelle Patient and welcome to a Sac Day Challenge. There's been a new data set released at Ancestry and I thought, A, I'd like to give you a bit of a look around and B, challenge you to have a dig, be deeper dive into these records and see if you can um, help a few others find a bit more information. So to find this new data set, head over to the search field and choose cart catalog. And if you're logged into the .com.au site, it will automatically be clicked with Australia switched on. And this newest data set here, you can see that just got uploaded um, seven days ago, 108,000 records are in there. If you're not seeing it at the top of the list, just notice there's a drop down menu here and you need to be on date added to see the latest data set. If I head over to it, the first thing I normally do is put in some of the common surnames that are in my family, particularly those I know had an interest in serving. And there's a tremendous number of them with the surname Otten, who are mostly from Bega in my family, though there is a Sydney branch as well. And if I search on that, there's only the one guy that signed up. And these papers are all the people who signed up and were found to be unfit for some reason or other. And that's why they're really interesting records, because they have a lot of um, family evidence in there that can give you some more clues about their health and their occupation. So in my case, I knew that this was a, a spelling typo that this is not a common middle name in all in our family, but L-Y-N-N is. And I hadn't seen that misspelling of Bega before, so I thought I would add that to my list of a spelling variants. But in case you don't know, you can actually go in and check what's actually on the record and add a correction if you, if you can tell from the original that it needs correcting. So I'm just going to quickly show you a little bit about this. So in George's case, when I look at the original record, apart from seeing information about his physical measurements, if I go to the very top, this is an application, not an attestation. This is the recruiting officer's handwriting. So he spelled it L-I-N-N. But if you have a close look at George's signature, and that's a nice thing about these records, we can capture the signature of our family member. You'll see it's very clearly, even with the bit of water damage here, L Y W -N, N, farmer, and when he actually applied. So what I did was um, I checked the next page. He's only got two pages in his file. He signed up in Bega, and I just went in under this information, clicked Add or Update, and you can see the two corrections I made. I went to the second page because I can actually see that he signed up. Um, his application at Bega, and that hadn't been included in the record set. But I also showed that the what I included the reason for my correction for his spelling of his middle name. So it's on the same page and he signed it that way. But I also added some other information to just help people who may be coming after me to research this guy. So then it means that whenever you see these Link, clickable links on a record page at Ancestry. That means someone has submitted a correction. It also means that it will now be part of the overall search process at Ancestry. So they will now more easily find this record because I've corrected it. Another group though that I did was um, I decided I'd have a look at um, Manly. Oh, actually, I'll do it automatically for you from the beginning. I thought, oh, I could go through to do just lots of bigger. But I wondered about some other locations as well. And so I thought, oh, lots of people I would have known in my local area of the northern beaches would have headed to Manly to sign up back in those days. So I decided to just click on Manly. And you'll see there's 143 people who signed up at the Manly area or have Manly as their birth location. And that's what's kind of nifty is you're finding people all over the place. And I scrolled right down because, you know, you always should scroll right down first. And there's a couple that just say Australia, and we'll look at those in a moment because they could do with a bit more information. This is a bit broad brush, and I wonder if there's more. Um, I could actually make the whole page 
show me 50 if I wanted to. So sometimes you've got a small enough data set you want to do that. But this one intrigued me as I thought, what's this guy doing in Perth? So I clicked on his record, and here's one I prepared earlier, and I can see that he came from Addison Road in Manly. That's why the keyword search found him and that he applied in Perth. And there's a spouse. Okay, how come? Has he run off? Has he got another woman? You know, your brain does start doing some um, jumping to conclusions, which I will recommend you don't do. Um, but if I actually click on his record, I, um, I can see a record for Perth and that that's his application and what the date is. But how did I find that? Well, guess what? There's multiple pages for this man. And if I go to the very first page in the data set, I'll see that there's an attestation for home service. So he was successful when he attested um, and he, this was in, in the 1917. And if I scroll through this record, I've got where he was born, who he's married to, what his name is, where their place was, what he was, a machinery expert. Nice word there. And his signature again. And here's all his medical information, including the bullet wound. So where did he get that? Um, a callus wound of an old fracture on the left leg, et cetera, et cetera. And they approved him. He's certified as available to serve. Um, and so I thought, oh, okay, so this is on radio. Remember this, the 1st of February. Where did this application of success happen where he got his attestation? So I do need to scroll around a bit, and here it is. It was at the showground camp in Sydney. I come look up Perth because I kept scrolling. And I'll just show you how long it took me to find the scrolling. I'm clicking through and I got a blank page and I'm clicking through and I got his service and when he was discharged and that he actually went from private to corporal. And I'm clicking through and a page I've never seen before, but the Australian Military Forces Conduct Sheet. Um, my other military records have a very different format. So I'm suspecting this is the Home Guard, um, easily available to pick up locally for the, for the um, clerks. And another empty page as well. And, I th you know, you could give up here, right? But no, wait, there's more. And that's when I found the one that was... Oh, hold on. This is from the year before. This is over in Perth and it says he's a returned soldier. So there's a whole story to be found out behind this man who's, despite having served, despite having lots of medical issues, he applied again in 2016 to go back and now only when I go to the next page do I find, I think it was the next page, if I go, oh, no, another blank must have been the bottom of the these stacks of pages about him and that he's volunteering and again this is another home service page back in 2017 so there's lots of information about this guy and the one page I want to look for must be down the very bottom this is where he's considered unfit because there's a half inch shortening of his left leg but obviously he hadn't been able to get away with things. I, I want to keep searching through, but I don't want the, the video to go for too long. But you get the idea. Never stop at page one. Always look at the full set, read all the pages, and see when you see these odd things like hmm, birth instead of DY, there's a whole lot of additional information to go into this guy's record. So we could, instead of just having these bits of data, we could add some of, by adding and updating information, we could actually see that we had attestation in Perth, but we had application at the showgrounds. So we can also add that and note down which film number it was on. I won't take up more of your time now, but I will encourage you to go into this data set, click on card catalogue, and why not? Pick a small town or a surname that you're particularly interested in and go through and just check all those. Um, the, are there any additional information you could add? If there's any changes in spelling, like um, I did actually found um, this version of Beaker. Oh, let me even type correctly. You can see how easy it is. Or did it have a 
tjejerna. Ja, ingen är det. Vega. And there's a couple of typos here where they've been born in the Liga. So just to quickly show you how to fix that, because we are assuming it's going to be wrong, I'm going to now go and check the actual original. And because we have free access this week, and of course lots of people are using it, so sometimes you need to reload. And it's the application place that's not quite correct. So let's look at the whole page here. So the postal address of this guy, this is bigger, but they've just not spelled it quite right. And his um, address is the police station. But let's go right down. This is bigger on the 21st of April, 1916. 21st of April. That's interesting. That was yesterday's anniversary, isn't it? No, day before. And this is an application. So I can close this, the application date, but let's just fix that place, right? Oh by going, sorry, wrong button, application place. And it was definitely a transcription error in this case. Unlike in others, it's often, I'll just show you, information that hasn't been transcribed, so it's from other pages. If you're going to do that, note down the film number at the bottom so you can write it in the comment. And here we just go, it's bigger, new south. Oh, there we are. I've typed it a few times in my life. Um, and here it is. And just, it doesn't need an explanation. I could add more if I found multiple things to change on this site. I could add more by just continuing to add more. So thank you for watching. I really do hope that um, you might decide to spend five minutes this Anzac day and, and have a go at it. Oh, look, I love it. Don't you love it when Zoom adds new features? It can automatically tell me when I've done this on the screen and raise my hand. Have a great week, folks, and let's all do our bit and make some additions to this data set because there's some very interesting facts buried in here. And thanks again for watching. If only I could find the button to turn the recording off. Would be great.